At Long Beach City College, we have 37 programs in CTE, 54 areas of emphasis, and 180 degrees and certificates. And I know that the board received a packet that lists some of those, and you can kind of see how they're organized by the various areas where we have our career and technical education. One of the things we're gonna do tonight is each of the deans is gonna talk about the various programs in each of the schools, and then we're gonna conclude by showing some innovation that's happening. The first school is, is mine. It's the School of Health Kinesiology, Science, and, and Math. And first, I'd like to recognize some of the faculty and staff that are here. Uh, in the back row, we have uh, Debbie Beitler and Kathleen Mays, Judy Weisenbaker, who's our program director for vocational nursing, and we have Mark Smith, who's one of our, our staff members. Um, and I also have John Downey here from Life Science. We're doing a collaboration with Horticulture. And I saw Casey Crook over there. He's from Kinesiology, where we'll be mentioning another program. So if you refer to this slide, you can see all of the programs that are in this school. Particularly, I know um, President Kellogg is very familiar with our registered nursing, so is, is, is Board Member Otto, who, who have attended many of our, our pinning ceremonies. We have one coming up on June 9th at 7.30, should you be inclined to attend. Again, um, but what I really want to focus on is that on this list of programs, that the faculty continue to create relevant programs based on industry and community needs. So if you look at, at, at the wonderful programs that are listed here, I've highlighted three. Um, one of them is home health and there's a tremendous demand for home health. So our vocational nursing area has created a home health program. It is 40 hours of intensive training, and it has been recently certified by the state of California. So I'd like to point that out. In addition, in our DMI, which is our radiology area, we have computer tomography, which is, uh, you've all heard, get a CT scan. So that's what you'll know about that. and it's. And the reason that we created that is the advisory committee said, nobody around trains our staff members in CT. So these are, these, are, these are students, now employees, that are working in radiology, and this new technology is in the hospital, and they haven't been trained in it yet, and they come back to Long Beach City College to get that training. We've had that program for two years now, and it's very popular. And then I'd like to point out uh, a new one, it's uh, massage therapy, which is in our kinesiology area. And we've just recently had that curriculum approved, and we're developing that program to meet a large need in the community and many uh, job opportunities for our students. So that, and I also want to point out that these programs are at both LAC and PC. So I believe our next slide is the journal Well, I, <laughs> I need a booster. Um, so I realized Pat already came up and talked about journalism, and he's here quite a bit. Um, as you all know, our journalism program is, well, actually, let me back up a bit. So as the Dean of Language Arts and Communication, it's probably more familiar to you to, to think of our school as English, uh, reading, foreign language, ESL, um, communication studies, and not necessarily CTE. And journalism is one of those interesting programs that happens to be housed in the English department, but it has a dual role. So it functions academic and CTE. So students have the opportunity to pursue a transfer degree um, or and or move into the workplace. And so as you can see on the slide above, there are several um, certificates and areas of emphasis that our students can select, which are really moving in a more cutting edge direction at this point. As you know, if we look back 10, 15 years ago, um, paper newspapers, we still have our Viking, of course, but it's also digital. Years ago, we just had paper. 
you know, actual newspaper. And so everything is moving in a more multimedia direction. And of course, our Viking is, is certainly up to speed with that, with Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, our digital newspaper. All of these opportunities are here for students to learn these skills and move on into the workplace. So it's a very exciting time, I think, for students to be participating in our journalism program here at the college. And I am actually filling in for my colleague, uh, Dina Humble, who is the dean of the School of Social Sciences and the Arts. So I, don't, I had to kind of bring myself up to speed with um, this very interesting school that ha is a combination of uh, visual and media arts and um, business. So on the one hand, we have um, business administration, accounting, money and banking, international business. These are just a few of the opportunities or options that students have if they decide to focus in the area of business. And as you know, business is complementary to many, many other programs as well. And I do know that we have students who actually opt to have a dual emphasis in business, business administration, along with other academic programs that we might have. On the visual and media arts side, we are giving our students an opportunity, of course, in a region that is rich with um, entertainment, film, radio, television, the opportunity to get hands-on training, hands-on skills in these areas. Uh, good evening, everyone. And I just wanted to point out that being the dean of the Career and Technical Education School, um, oftentimes the thought might be that all career and technical education falls under one school. So as you can see tonight, career and technical education ac actually is applied across the college. And these are very, very important programs that not only transfer on to um, universities, uh, but they also end in very successful job opportunities that provide very uh, good family supporting wages. So as you can see here in the School of Career and Technical Education, there are a number of very interesting and innovative programs, and we're going to get into that part of the presentation next. So as we transition into the innovation, you see uh, two pictures on, on that slide. One is the rendering of the, the new C building, that's the nursing building. And the other one is the math technology, which will be housing our culinary arts program. And I want to commend the board and, and the, um, the leadership at the college with the, the vision of the, the bond program for our instructional facilities. We um, have participated at the school level in designing each of these facilities from, from you know, in talking with our faculty and designing instructional spaces that are absolutely state of the art moving forward. The, the C building remodel is scheduled to open in spring of 2016. And the exciting thing about it is we're using nursing simulation for everything that we do. And that's going to be the next slide. But this has enabled us to bring that simulation, which now resides in the B building, all into one location where we're going to have a, a state of the art simulation lab. Uh, coupled with our skills laboratory, and it's just going to be an outstanding instructional space for our, for our faculty and for our students. The, I, I, the, the, C, the, the V building is up there, which is math tech, and people say, well, what's going to happen when math moves out of the D building, right? Well, this is what's going to happen. Because of the demand for prerequisites in, in the healthcare area, the there are three courses that are extremely high wait list. It's microbiology, physiology, and anatomy. So when the math department moves out, not only are we we're going to be building more wet labs to accommodate those bottleneck courses, but we're also going to house our DMI, our radiology area, and our medical assisting area on the first floor of the D building. So the faculty has already been working to design that space, and it's going to be excellent. So as I said, those, these are real pictures of our nursing simulation hospital. I introduced some of the, the faculty. I wanted to in particularly 
mention both Debbie Beitler, who is our, our RN faculty liaison for simulation and has been since day one, and Kathleen Mays, who is our simulation coordinator. And the critical thing with simulation is, is that it allows the students to work on a mannequin before they go to the hospital and work on a human so they can make a few errors before they get out there, which I think you'll all agree is a good thing, right? But in a low pressure environment, right? You make a, a mistake and the mannequin may talk, but it's a student over there being the voice of the mannequin. So um, we're, we're very excited that, that they're able to, to use that. And, and again, I just want to stress that that group back there has been integrally involved in, in designing this space along with other faculty members we went to different colleges and simulation has has been a major part of our curriculum for over five years now so um, it has been very beneficial so that is how this technology ties into innovation here at Long Beach City College so a little bit more on simulation it's um it's creeping into just about all aspects of teaching, learning, and training. Um, specifically, uh, we have now some uh, welding in our metal fabrication program under the engineering and advanced manufacturing area, uh, weld uh, simulators. And so if you think of welding as an actual process, uh, you think of an environment that uh, uh, maybe has a fumes and needs ventilation and it, it might be that you're under a hood and trying to teach in those conditions is quite difficult so if you look at the illustration on the left there's two weld simulators um, made by lincoln electric uh, there's a table there so students in a regular traditional classroom can actually practice their welding skills the other thing that simulation brings in is that instant feedback so when you are actually a student trying to learn if you don't have an instructor over your shoulder uh, really directing you to make a correction or, a, or teaching you how to do a specific technique, um, you may learn bad habits. So in, through simulation, you can actually self-correct by actually the simulation process directing, uh, directing you. Some other examples of uh, simulation would include a robotic simulation. So we have now uh, robots in the in the manufacturing area that before you actually get on the robot uh, you can do simulation on the computers you can completely plug in a teach pendant and sim uh, simulate on that computer and then you can actually go directly to the robot so if you think about a robot not having any real senses like a human being uh, a person uh, can direct the robot to do something very horrible in a few seconds I had a tour of a manufacturing plant where they were doing castings and someone uh, told the robot to do a right rather than a left, and the robot could probably reach the ceiling of this room, and it actually went right through the wall of the factory. So simulation um, is a good thing. Um, a few other th uh, things that we have going on at the college uh, that we do not have pictures of here is 3D printing. 3D printing is creeping in at all levels, and I think you're gonna see uh, 3D printing um, getting into the culinary arts. I think you're going to see 3D printing getting into math classrooms. You're going to see 3D printing getting everywhere because it, it provides that, uh, that, that simulation, uh, that visual that you can't provide any other way on a, like a two, 2D piece of paper or a computer screen. So 3D printing has really come down in cost and it's really starting to penetrate um, education. And then let's not forget about the real authentic things that we have going on here. Uh, for example, our child development center. So that allows Long Beach City College students to go right out into an authentic environment. And of course, our new culinary uh, facility has, it's gonna have a full-fledged, fully functional restaurant. And so again, it's an authentic learning activity. So simulation and authentic learning are, are very important to college students, they're very important to the community. And I think we're gonna uh, see great benefit there. Um, I like to just kind of spin into the whole idea of co digital computing, and we have a cybersecurity program, and you, you can only imagine the amount of work that's going on today to protect um, all of the information that's, that's um, vital to corporations in the United States, just up the road here, Sony, you saw what happened with Sony. Um, you heard the Target and the Home Depot, and it seems like every day um, people are being breached. And so cybersecurity is going to become 
and network security is going to become uh, more and more important. And I think the thing is that we're pointing out here is we, we don't want to really highlight every program tonight because we do not, but there are some really interesting things going on um, at the college. And so we're back to uh, the arts, uh, digital, visual, and social uh, media. Honestly, um, when I took a look at the journalism program and had the good fortune to um, work with the School of um, Social Science and the Arts, what I saw were lots of connections. And so when we look at these CTE programs that we have spread out in all of our schools, what we can see is that our students have opportunities to make many, many connections. We're in a region um, that is rich with uh, entertainment opportunities. We have a radio and, and TV program. Um, students have an opportunity to uh, not only participate in simulation, but actually in hands-on. I had the good fortune of being uh, invited to uh, sit in and be an interviewee in one of uh, Pat McKean's classes during one of our summer journalism classes. And so I was the guinea pig, and I sat on a stool in the front of the classroom, and students fired, fired away their questions. Um, and I tried to be as you know, forthright and candid as possible. And of course, Pat had told me that, oh, Jennifer, we're not going to print it, so it's OK. If, you know. So I was a little bit more at ease. But the point is, is that students had an opportunity to get that real practice in a simulated environment. So then they would turn in their stories and Pat would review them, and they'd get some feedback. To me, that's, that's ideal. That's what education is about. It's that opportunity to practice something that eventually is going to lead to a career. That's just one opportunity with journalism. With radio and television, students can practice um, developing, producing commercials, um, doing voiceovers for commercials. We all know commercials aren't going away, so that's certainly a great area that students can go into. Uh, digital media actually brings together all of the things that you see on the screen. From film, to computer, to social media, there's a lot of crossover and a lot of collaboration. And I think that, for me, that was the point that I wanted to convey with CTE. It's not over here, and academic is over here. It's like this, and students have an opportunity to get a career, start in the workplace right away, but also return if they want to and continue their education. I think that's the most valuable thing that we have at the community college are these options for students. So another hot topic out there is uh, energy. And here's a collaboration that I'd like to point out between the electrical department and the advanced transportation program. Again, in the illustration, you have some solar panels uh, right next to the advanced transportation uh, center. And those solar panels are actually plugged into a charging station that can actually charge a, a vehicle. And if you think about uh, solar panels being off the grid and a place to charge a vehicle, if there was, for example, if we had a major quake in the area and the grid went down, there'd actually be a spot at Long Beach City College where you could actually charge a vehicle, you could charge laptop computers, you could charge cell phones. And through this collaboration, it got the attention of, well, maybe we should be looking at more of this out in, in government of places where we can actually integrate these hotspots so if things go down, we, we can still um, function. And so you've got the, uh, the idea of students taking solar classes right outside a facility where students are uh, working in compressed natural gas and able to um, really see how an electric vehicle is charged. And our final uh, innovative collaborative project tonight uh, you have on the screen is, um, is, is very exciting as well. The, the life science area uh, got an ASB grant to buy native drought resistant plant. And we work uh, together with the facilities and grounds area and outside the D building we're going to be planting those plants, and, and our botany students and life sciences are going to be able to use that as a living laboratory, uh, as well as our, our horticulture students at the Pacific Coast campus. So we're pretty excited about that. That's one of the reasons uh, Mr. Downey's here. He, he was uh, 
um, integral to getting that up and going. We're kind of working on it right now. We're picking plants and figuring out what's going to work. We have the space, and it's just a really great example of how all of the areas are going to come together, including the campus supports to uh, help our students really experience something special here at Long Beach City College while being environmentally conscious. So as, as uh, Ken said, and as Dr. Rodden said, th these are just some of the programs. We want to emphasize that. We picked some that we're doing some, some neat things that we want to demonstrate for you guys tonight. Uh, but there are many, many other programs on this campus that are doing fine work as well. So with that, we'd like to thank you for having us, and thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Are there questions from members of the board at this time? Is there everyone? Uh, Chair recognizes Trustee Zia. Thank you, Paul, and congratulations on getting your doctorate, um, you. your thesis dissertation, um, and uh, Ken and Jennifer. Um, just a few questions that I have. First, um, thank you for this. Uh, this is one. This is one of my questions uh, of which which programs we give certificates, um, and perhaps this is a question for Terry. Um, what's the difference between certificate of accomplishment and certificate of achievement? So I, I can handle that. Uh, we can all handle that. Uh, a certificate of accomplishment is is a certificate that's under 18 units, and a certificate of achievement is over 18 units, and the significance is that certificates of accomplishment obviously are lesser and they're more local, so that's why they're called accomplishments. Certificates of achievement have been um, vetted and approved by the chancellor's office. Okay, great. Um, other questions that I uh, wanted to ask you. Um, so what are the success rates of our students in these CTE programs? That really varies by, by program. For example, I can use nursing and then no one else will be able to come close to that success rate. <laughs> um, th it's about a 90% success rate. And most recently on the NCLEX, which is their final exam, um, we usually register about a 95%. Uh, and uh, not their final exam, it's their exam to become certified as a registered nurse. Um, so that's that's an example of a very high end as far as success rates, but each of the programs that you have there would have their own, you know, I individual rates. I don't know that I know an average. Yeah. Um, okay. W besides nursing, how are we doing overall um, with our success rates? How many students do we have in the CTE programs? Um, and then, are, do, are we measuring the uh, that they're getting jobs? Um, market studies or matching with industry, those kind of data, if you could help me out, I'd appreciate it. Sure, well, with specific success rates, I'm sure we could come back with, with some data. We weren't prepared to talk about that tonight. However, you did ask about employer surveys, which we, uh, the programs do do employer surveys and they do get out to the employers and, and ask not only what are the opportunities in your area, but how are Long Beach City College students doing at your place of business? So that's an ongoing evaluation that does occur. What's the percentage of our students getting jobs and what are the pay rates that um, they're getting, our students? Did you have a specific area in mind? Well, you know, if you could, if you could give me a range or, um, you know, no, I don't have a specific area. If no, I can Paul. interrupt. Paul, okay. let me go back to a previous question. The student success scorecard has our overall completion um, rates for tech career technical education programs, and it's 45%, uh, 45.1, actually. Um, the salaries, um, the chancellor's office does its best to capture salaries of, for earnings for all of the career technical fields, and that's on the salary surfer which is also um, it's on the chancellor's office website. So if an individual trustee wants to target a specific program or any one of these programs that we have data for, you can look that up. Uh, we, the chancellor's office does not have data yet for all of the programs. That's something that the state is working on and at this point has no means to track individuals into the workplace. So other than specific faculty working with specific employers, we don't have any way to track students into employment. The data is also difficult to dis disaggregate because 
a cohort of individuals that enroll in a program basically have to select um, that they're going to participate in the program, but some of them may be coming back just to get a few courses to sharpen their skills, and there's not that differentiation. So we have to somewhat do some interpretation. Other people may come to the college, self-select three classes because their employer is asking them to take this, this, and this. So if you take three CAD classes at Long Beach City College, we'll give you a job. We don't really have a way to authenticate that on a report. Um, that's somewhat the difficulty of career and technical education. But I think one thing that is recognized is that there is a value in career and technical education. Yeah, and I absolutely am supportive of it, and uh, I have been. It's uh, uh, very near and dear to my heart. Um, I uh, participated in the advisory group for the new uh, construction technology program, and I was very impressed with your work, Ken, Dr. Shaw, and um, all the work that you do at the CTE group. Um, and um, I just want to make sure that we are um, setting our students up for success and making them career ready. So I really look forward to getting those data that um, I guess is being worked on to make sure that um, whatever we're doing or whatever enhancements that we need to do, um, we focus on those um, areas. Um, and I think that's pretty much uh, all I had. Uh, I'm sure my other questions will come back to me, but that's all I have for now. Thank you for your great work. Other members of the board at this time? Comments? Actually, it came back to me, Jeff. Um, I witnessed uh, one of our um, students, two of our students at the Board of Governors breakfast that uh, Trustee Baxter hosted. Uh, I was going to report on this at uh, my board member comments, but since I may lose you guys, uh, um, this it was fantastic. Um, it was just wonderful to see these students come up with that project of the robotics program um, and the great Scott Frazier, who's definitely doing some great work with them and uh, was a very proud uh, professor and made me very proud of your work and the work of this uh, organization, this institution. So thank you. Other members? Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, President uh, Kellogg? Yes. Can I just say that if there is other information specifically that you would like, I think Paul just mentioned this, but I'd like to offer um, any opportunity that you have to ask questions that would require us to actually dig up some data for you, we'd be happy to do that. And if in the future you have any more um, interest in learning more about a specific program, we would also be happy to do that. So thank you, um, team, for presenting, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. It's always, it's always a pleasure with CTE. You know, we know through difficult times, but we've always been very proud of the CTE programs here at Long Beach City College and what we offer. And, and uh, as Paul mentioned, the, the nursing event, graduation is a great event to go to, to see the success of uh, the family and the students. But the nursing uh, event is also um, high on my list as well. It's always a really a, a great event to attend. And uh, so obviously we'll be there for that. But uh, great job. And I know, speaking on behalf of the board, we're very proud of the CTE programs offered here at Long Beach City College and the great work you do. We're now to the final presentation, which is 3.4, the LEAD Academy. <coughs> Superintendent President Oakley, you or should I recognize directly Vice President Delgadio? Um, I will turn it over to Vice President Delgadio. Um, before that, though, I just want to comment that um, uh, this is an, an item that um, uh, uh, Vice President Delgadio, other members of the executive team in coordination and in partnership with the Academic Senate have been working on for several months and at the behest of uh, Board Member Otto several months ago. Um, so we're uh, happy to say that um, it's come a long way and I think um, you'll be happy with the results. So with that, I'll turn it over to Vice President Delgadio. Thank you, President Oakley. Uh, let me take this moment uh, to introduce two of my colleagues who are going to join me at the podium in a minute. Uh, Karen Kane uh, with the Academic Senate, uh, our president in the Academic Senate, and also Thomas Hamilton, the president of the union. And I first want to acknowledge them for the work that they've done on this program because together as a team, we've worked to uh, develop the program and design what you're going to see here tonight. And if you take a look at, uh, at your tabletop, you'll find that you have a brochure right next to you that's also been developed uh, in support of the program.
So we kind of have a theme going here today, communication and collaboration, and this certainly has been that effort uh, together that we've had as we've gathered input and uh, come together not only as a, um, as a cohort of three representing the administration, faculty, and classified, but then also putting together a steering committee that has helped us to uh, put the design of the program together. So we've solicited a lot of input that be actually began last June. It's taken 10 months to get it to where we are today. Uh, but it was important particularly for accreditation purposes because they do require that you conduct surveys and so forth. So we've done surveys, we've done focus groups, and then of course our steering committee has helped move this project along. So let's just give you a quick perspective on the program that I'm going to have my colleagues chime in here with uh, what their participation and experience has been with the program. Uh, first of all, let me say that we're getting very positive reception from our campus community. We're hearing comments such as, I've been waiting for this all my career here. Uh, thank you so much for putting this together. And uh, in our last session, we've done three information sessions so forth personally, and we have one more. But in our last session, uh, there were about 45 people in there uh, interested in listening to what the program was about. And when we asked the question, how many of you plan to apply, all 45 raised their hands. So we were.